Hold on, hold on. Just don't buy it yet. We still need to wait a few days. Hey guys, it's Eric from Hong Kong based in Germany. I've been fasting since I was 17 years old for almost 20 years. I want to give you guys alternative perspective about investment as well as in personal finance. Today, I want to talk about why it's time to get ready and buy Alibaba. Alibaba share price went down more than 50% since I told you guys to get rid of it in March 2021. However, Charlie Munger actually started to collect Alibaba. In fact, he increased the share four times since 2021. So is it time to buy Alibaba? First of all, we must look at the reasons behind of the collapse of the share price. There are two main reasons. The first reason was of course the crackdown by the Chinese government about its anti-competitive behaviors and data privacy. The second one is about missing expectations. But before I go into missing expectations, I must explain something to you guys. It's about the fiscal year or financial year for Alibaba. They follow the British system. So it starts on the 1st of April as quarter one. So going forward, whenever I say quarter one, it's actually April until the end of June, which is roughly equal to the second quarter of calendar year. I know it's pretty confusing. You will be used to that. The second reason of the collapse of the share price, as I mentioned, is because they missed the expectations from the analysts and the market. They missed the expectation by 85% for earnings per share in quarter one and a whoppling 89% miss of EPS in quarter two financial year. No wonder the share price collapsed. Since Charlie Munger doubled his share in quarter three last year and then doubled it again in quarter four, Let's look at what are the major events that happened to Alibaba during this time and whether the situation has improved. There are three major events happened during this period of time. The first one was common prosperity. If you haven't heard about it, check out my video above or in the description below. Basically, Alibaba pledged to donate 15.5 billion US dollars on the courses around common prosperity. Luckily, it was over five years. By all means, it is not a small amount of money, but given the size of Alibaba and it's over five years, it's actually not too bad. In fact, it could be positive that it alleviate the uncertainty around common prosperity so that Alibaba doesn't need to worry about that they need to pay something else to the government because it's fixed and they know how much they are. The second event is of course the results from the financial year quarter two, basically quarter three from last year. Um, of course, as mentioned, the EPS, the earnings per share was much, much, much lower than expectations. But worse was that the sales growth outlook went down from 30% to 20 to 23%, which is a huge drop in terms of proportion. But if you look at the growth rate of 20 to 23% compared with the year before, by all means, this is not a slow growth. Third event, of course, is the infamous delisting of DD. If you haven't heard about it, just check out the videos in my channel. I have a number of videos about DD's IPO and also delisting. Anyways, delisting of the Chinese company is a big concern because Alibaba and other Chinese companies listed in the US might suffer the same fate, right? But I think that the risk of being delisted is not that high. I'll explain later in the section about risks. All these three events are negative, of course, but the impact are relatively short term. Some of them actually help to alleviate the uncertainty, or if you talk about the growth rate, the growth is still pretty strong, right? But having said that, it doesn't mean that we need to jump in and buy now. We still need to look at the fundamentals, of course. If we look at the fundamentals, the price to earnings ratio is around 17. The price to sales ratio is around 2.6. In comparison, Amazon's price to earnings ratio is 64, which is roughly four times higher than Alibaba. And the price to sales ratio is 3.6. Interestingly, the growth rate is roughly the same. The growth rate from Amazon last year was 22%. And of course, as I mentioned, the expected growth rate of Alibaba is 20 to 23%. That means Alibaba has similar growth rate as Amazon, but the PE ratio, price to earnings ratio is only one fourth of it. This is really good value for money. The fundamentals sound good, right? 
How about the risks? I identified four main risks. The first one is regulatory risk in China, especially on anti-competitive behaviors. But they were already fined $2.8 billion, a record in the world. And even with that sum of money, it's not that big compared with size. So it is extremely unlikely that there will be any higher fines that will affect Alibaba that much. Let alone that the worst case scenario of breaking it up did not happen. More importantly is that Jack Ma already reappeared. That means they have already reached a deal with the Chinese government and it's not going to get any more worse. The second risk is that whether the Chinese government would force Alibaba to delist from the US. This risk is also relatively low. Yes, Didi was being forced to delist, but the situation was different. Didi was defying the order from the Chinese government and went on IPO in the US anyways. But even the regulator in China said that they had no intention to stop company using VIE structure to list in the US, at least for the existing companies. You need to understand that that means a $2 trillion capital raised in the US among the 200 and so Chinese companies. So they are not going to give up this $2 trillion capital raise so easily. The third risk is whether the US government will force Alibaba and other Chinese companies to delist. I mean, the chance is medium because of geopolitical tension. But to be honest, I would see this as a buying opportunity. Of course, in the very short term, the share price will drop a lot. Um, if you already have the share, I would recommend you to you know, cut loss due to this situation. But I would certainly buy in because the fundamentals would be the same. I mean, more than 90% of Alibaba's business is in China anyways. The listing would not affect it too much. And you can still buy it on Hong Kong Stock Exchange or through your broker in the US OTC. The fourth risk is about the slowing sales growth. They already reduced the price in January because of the macroeconomic situation. And then also you see a slowing of retail sales growth in China overall. This would of course affect the commission they can charge on their e-commerce platforms. Secondly, the marketing budget of Chinese companies are also going down. Well, they also rely, Alibaba rely a lot on marketing on their platforms. So of course, this will have a hit on their revenue. We're talking about 63% of its revenue. So this is a big part of their business. So what's my take on Alibaba? I think we need to change our perspective a little bit from a pure growth stock, which just selling the growth story to now buying it because of its value. It is undervalued. If you look at the PE ratio, it's almost only one-fourth of that of Amazon, while the growth rate is similar, and it's high growth, we're talking about 20%. Let alone that most of the analysts, we're talking about 56 analysts that did research on Alibaba. Only one of them are telling us to sell. In fact, 42 of them asked us to buy, which is quite crazy, right? The average price is target around 188 Hong Kong dollars. At the moment, the stock price is roughly 123 Hong Kong dollars. So you can see at least a 35% increase. But I personally think that in coming one or two years, it would be much, much more than 35%. Hold on, hold on. Just don't buy it yet. We still need to wait a few days. On the 24th of February, they're going to announce their fiscal year third quarter results. So basically the fourth quarter result from last year. Um, I'm expecting two scenarios. It will either beat expectations and the stock price would rally. The other case is that, of course, it would be below expectation. The share price would drop further. I can imagine it drop a lot. But I will start to collect the share from Alibaba because I think this is already undervalued. Of course, we are talking about excluding some factors we cannot assume. Um, in the coming one or two years, if there's a World War III or the Chinese government decided that they need to find Alibaba even a record sum of money or breaking it down. But I think that later is very unlikely. So are you guys going to get ready and buy Alibaba after 24th of February? Leave me in the comments below. If you like the video, remember like, share and subscribe. This would be important motivation for me to continue. Even better, click the bell button next to the subscribe button so that you're not going to miss out on my future analysis.